Good afternoon, YouTubers. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the RCA Idler. Uh, this is for the 45 RCA players, uh, whether it's an RP190 or an RP168, the Idler is the same, sometimes known as a drive wheel. And you're going to note that it's a two stage drive wheel. You have an upper and a lower stage. And the purpose of that is to have the motor drive the lower section of it right down here that moves the wheel around and the upper section will take and move I know it's hard for me to show you here but it moves the the turntable itself as the idler turns around it's moving that turntable around and um, a lot of people wonder whether or not these can be rebuilt and the answer is yes they can now there's a couple different ways to handle these there are quite a few people out there that will rebuild these for you. I believe the cost is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $28. Uh, you have to send them your own idler and um, the funds to send it back. So you can have quite a bit of money um, involved, you know, at least $33 or more. And I developed a way to rebuild these for around $10 for myself anyhow and be available for you at a later point. This is going to be one of a couple of videos. The first one is to tell you a little bit about the idlers, what they do and whether or not they can be rebuilt. This one as you see is perfectly round. It's perfectly round on the lower and the upper section and as the as the motor turns the idler around it does a fine job of driving the um, changer wheel itself, you know, the, the turntable. Now the problem with these so to help you understand, you'll notice that these are spring-loaded. There's a spring along the side here that keeps pressure or tension against uh, or with the idler to keep the pressure against the drive shaft on the motor. And after a period of time, especially on these older machines, you're going to take and you're going to open the damn thing and you're going to find that there's a divot that was left here because it's rubber and it develops a divot there and every time you turn the thing on it goes thump, 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 thump. Not very pleasant while you're trying to <laughs> listen to your player. Now, as I said, this is an example of a perfectly fine one here. And um, I'm going to show you some examples of some that cannot be rebuilt. Look at this one. This one is cooked. You can clearly see it's melted. Melted everywhere. That is beyond repair. Now this can be sent out and all the rubber can be taken off and they can rebuild it that in that manner but it would be impossible for me to rebuild it using common tools. That's likewise for this one. You notice that it's actually got a little gap in here, a flat spot against the section that ran up against the uh, turntable and it's just too far gone. Nothing you can do with that. Here's a ditto again. Nothing can be done with this one. It's just too far gone. As is this. You'll note that the top is all screwed up here. If I just turn it around you can clearly see that. So we can skip those as possible rebuilds. Those would have to be uh, sent out and you'll notice it's quite flat on one side with the divot in it too. So those are examples of those that would have to be sent out. And lastly, here's another example. Now this one has, and it may be hard for you to see, but several cracks in the wheel itself. This is also beyond repair. All of this would have to come off and be re-rubbered. Those that can be fixed would be something like this. Now this one, it's hard for you perhaps to see, but there's a tiny divot right in there. And there's one on the other side as well. It can be better seen when you hold it in this direction. Believe it or not, that's rebuildable, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in a moment. Here's another example with a good sized divot in it, as you can see, and it does have a flat spot up top here. Again, rebuildable. And here's another example with a flat spot on the section that drives the, uh, the motor board, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the uh, turntable. Years ago, you used to be able to buy one of these little sons of guns. Somebody had these advertised on eBay all the time. 
and they were made out of brass. They were turned on a, on a machine, made out of brass, and they provided you with a couple of O-rings. Not just any old O-rings though. You needed a type of rubber that would have enough stick to it to move the, uh, the turntable and be driven by the motor. And you'll notice it has a nice little groove in it on both sides there. And it was quite nice. Back then, this is a few years ago, they sold for $35, but they were much heavier and you could replace the, the rubbers on them if and when they crapped out. Uh, not very likely though because of the, the uh, substance, the, the way the uh, material is made, this uh, rubber. So I gave with the idea, I said, why the hell can't I take a normal idler like this, even though it has a flat spot on it, or a divot in it, turn it down, and put my own O-rings on it like this right here. And that's exactly what I decided to try. And it works. It took me a few tries to get it right, but I developed a method to turn these down so that you could do this yourself with an ordinary lathe and a couple of tools. It doesn't take long and it's pretty easy to do. More importantly, it actually works. And again, these come off and if these were to fail at some point, you just put the new ones on. Take the old off and put the new on. So this is just a beginning video to tell you a little bit about the idlers, what they are, what their function is, and they are very, very important in the operation of the RCA 45 players. In fact, when you buy any old RCA player, um, having not been rebuilt or haven't been rebuilt at least in the last 10 years, you can pretty much figure that all the rubber that's in there is going to have to be replaced or refurbished. Some of the examples again would be on the motor board, all of the motor mounts. They, they disintegrate, they get hard, they break and crack and fall apart. Again, this either has to be rebuilt or you have to get a new idler, one or the other. Um, you also have to worry about the the uh, motor board mounts themselves, they, they dry out. That's what actually keeps the vibration separate from the rest of the player. And another item that we're going to touch on later on is the cycle cam. I'm going to be doing a video on the cycle cam and, and how to handle those as well. And this is all stuff that can be done by you, the ordinary Joe Schmuck out there. And we're going to teach you how to do those things. But this is part one of at least two videos. My second video is going to show you how to turn down one of these old little suckers right here and uh, be able to put your own uh, rubber wheels on it. So there you have it. I want you to stay tuned because at some point in the near future you're going to see that done. You'll find it interesting, but even more, more importantly you'll find it gratifying when you're going to be able to do this yourself and depend on, on yourself to do it rather than to have to send it out and spend a, a few bucks that, that are pretty near and dear today in today's economy. So I want to thank you for checking in. Um, there will be more videos to come. I'm going to start doing a few how-to videos for, for more of the novices out there than anything else. We've done one already on, on putting in cartridges in the 45 RCA player. Uh, it's really caught on well. A lot of people have seen it. I've sold an awful lot of cartridges. It works. They're cheap and inexpensive uh, fixes for the players, and they just sound wonderful. They really do. So I urge you once again to check in and uh, see how this is done. It may be another week or two before you actually see the video up. Uh, time is of essence with me. I just don't have much of it. So, once again, thank you for tuning in, and um, stay tuned for more to come.